Finally, we once again admit that the much-awaited first orbital test flight of SpaceX's Starship vehicle will never happen this month. This time, why? Well, the first flight of the Space Launch System will not lift off after August 29. And for sure, if SLS hasn't flown, Starship can't fly. This seems ridiculous, but let me explain. Welcome back to Alpha Tech. We want to take time to thank you for your continued support of the channel. And let's take a seat and we'll expose everything about Starship can't get to orbit in August because of this silly reason. As the media officially reported, SpaceX's Starship vehicle can't lift off this month as it's not yet received the necessary launch clearance. Earlier, the launch was scheduled for July. Later, it was shifted to August. On August 2nd, CEO Elon Musk in a tweet said, a successful orbital flight is probably between 1 and 12 months from now. According to a radio spectrum license application that the company filed with the U.S. Federal Communication Commission, FCC, SpaceX is targeting a six-month window that opens on September 1st for the highly anticipated mission. But remember, this approval is not the final regulatory hurdle that Starship must clear on its way to the launch pad. SpaceX apparently still hasn't received a launch license for the Starship orbital test flight, which aims to lift off from the company's Starbase facility in South Texas. So, well, a lack of environmental approval has still been the single most important bottleneck of the orbital Starbase launch operation at the present and possibly forever. Even when the FAA has determined that SpaceX's plans for the company's massive Starbase launch site in South Texas will not be enough to require a full environmental impact statement, SpaceX will now need to make more than 75 changes to its proposal for the Starbase facility if the company wants to avoid additional review and eventually receive a license from the FAA to launch its new Starship rocket to orbit from that site. If SpaceX makes those changes, it should help pave the way for the company to receive a launch license for Starship, though that still isn't guaranteed. And although Musk is extremely confident in SpaceX's alternatives, a Pad 39A Starship launch site could just be brought online in more than four months, at least if SpaceX refocuses all of its Starship resources into Florida. That timeline is actually still too optimistic. Furthermore, SpaceX also needs to face the NASA hurdle for the Starship backup launch pad. NASA wants Elon Musk's SpaceX to ensure its plan to launch its next-generation Starship rocket from Florida would not put at risk nearby launch infrastructure critical to the International Space Station. Too many barriers from the government for Starship, so we'll have to wait patiently. The question is, why are the national agency approvals for SpaceX Starship orbital launches taking so long and are so complicated? In fact, there are disproportionates from the start of this two-horse race to reach orbit by August or September, NASA, SLS, and Starship. At first glance, the fact that Starship ran aground was the FAA's fault. But as you may have discovered, the FAA, after all, is just a minion, and the person pulling the strings behind that is the U.S. government. Why is that? Well, it's closely related to SLS and their so-called honor. For more than a decade, NASA's been building a new mega rocket, the Space Launch System, or SLS, a 4.1 billion plus bright orange rocket ship that carries 70 tons of cargo to orbit. It's also the rocket NASA hopes will return American astronauts to the moon and then take them to Mars. More importantly, everyone who is a big name in space, Boeing, which is 1.26%, Lockheed Martin at 1.26%, Northrop Grumman at 1.97%, and Aerojet Rocket Iron Holdings at 2.71%, they have a piece of this project. Meanwhile, you know Starship is 100% developed by Elon Musk's private company, SpaceX. When NASA first announced the SLS project in 2010, it set an ambitious schedule for development that assumed the first flight as early as 2016. But obviously, that didn't happen. For the Orion spacecraft, the situation is arguably worse. The spacecraft was intended to fly humans into deep space, and it's unlikely to do so before at least 2024 with the Artemis II mission. That means NASA will have spent two decades developing a vehicle that's essentially a larger, more modernized version of the Apollo capsule. Not only that, they also spent an enormous amount of money, up to more than $23 billion on this rocket that can only fly once. With such a terrorist investment, if the SLS flies after Starship's launch, it would be a slap in the face to the U.S. government and NASA. The government definitely won't allow this to happen. 
And as you know, Starship is still covered in dust at Starbase. Fortunately, after repeated delays that have pushed the project way behind schedule, NASA has confirmed that SLS is finally approaching the finish line. NASA says it has placeholder dates for August 29th, September 2nd, and September 5th for the rocket's debut, though there's still plenty of work left to do on the vehicle between now and then. If NASA doesn't meet those dates, the next window to launch opens in late September. The windows are dictated by the position of the moon in relation to the Earth so that SLS can successfully get in the proper path around the moon. They must allow for the Orion crew capsule to be illuminated by the sun for most of the flight. That way it can get enough rays on its solar panels. And if NASA rolls out SLS to the launch pad in mid-August but can't launch by September 5th, then the rocket's liftoff can see a significant delay. It all has to do with the SLS's flight termination system, which is used to destroy the rocket if something goes catastrophically wrong during the launch and the vehicle begins to veer off course. Teams must fully test the flight termination system before launch, and that work can only be done inside the VAB. Once the SLS is rolled out from the VAB, there is a 20-day time limit for the flight termination system before it has to be tested again. That means the rocket has to launch within 20 days of rollout or it must be returned to the VAB so the flight termination system can get checked out again. This testing takes time, so if SLS is forced to come back to the VAB after rolling out in August, chances are it wouldn't be ready to fly until late October. After all, hopefully NASA SLS can fly soon and open the door to SpaceX's Starship. The U.S. government probably has forgotten it was SpaceX and Elon Musk who ended the U.S. space shameful nearly decade-long dependence on Russia. In other words, without SpaceX, NASA would still be exclusively dependent on Russian Soyuz rockets and spacecraft to get its astronauts to and from the space station that it spent tens of billions of dollars to help build. Even in a best-case SpaceX-free scenario, NASA might instead be dependent upon a rocket with Russian engines to launch its own astronauts. SpaceX has saved the U.S. space industry, but the U.S. government is getting in the way of the benefactor. And that's all for today's video. What do you think about the race of NASA SLS and Elon Musk Starship? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed today's video, leave us with a like and consider subscribing for more great content like this. We'll see you next time.